<laughs> she stopped me. I would that. Why would you do that? Well, okay, it was kind of the moment situation. And listen, it was that's too late. Do you know what? That's what they, we all know about that. That's right. why you have it in arm's reach. He was reaching. You should know. He didn't reach that hard, though. He didn't reach that hard. Oh, <laughs> come on, you two. But anyway, so she got pregnant the first time you had sex. Then what happened? We decided at that point because of her situation, and let me just give this little backdrop. At that particular point, I still was a legally married man, and she was still a legally married woman. Oh, okay. We were in rehab, and my suggestion at the time was because of the timing, because of our situations, it just wasn't a good time. And uh, that caused a rift between us because we both agreed that it wasn't the best timing. Mm. And 12 weeks later, she decided, kicked me out. she decided that she wanted to go in a different direction. Did you kick her out or did she just decide to leave? I'm going to tell you verbatim based on what I told her. I did not come down here to Florida to get involved, to leave one family, to kind of get involved with another family. It's not the right timing. If there's a child on this earth, I will always financially support the child. I've got two previous children. I have a problem financially supporting, but I'm not ready for this ready-made family thing, right? So so you told her to hit the bricks. Well, because she, both of us weren't from Florida, I told her the best idea, if you're going to, you know, proceed forward, then to at least be with your family. I will give you the financial support. For the baby, but... Right, so you need to kind of go back to Ohio where you're from. Miss White, what is your version of that event? I take it it's not the same. No, he's he's speaking very, you know, logically right now. Mm -hmm. But when we were in the situation, it was, I'm not ready, this is not the right thing. And which, I mean, we, we kind of went back and forth. But at the end of the day, it was what it was. And that Saturday, it was, I want to work it out. But then again, I don't. Then Sunday, he bought me a dog. And Monday, he <coughs> didn't buy me a bus ticket to get out. <laughs> you bought her a dog? Bought yeah. me a dog. Did you buy her a bus ticket? Because I felt that she was understanding my position, understanding that both of us agreed that this was not the course we were going to take. And for you to change courses, <coughs> obligate me to change courses. I want to steal the course that we set out. Okay. So if that's your I decision. You. I got you. Let me ask you this. It sounds like it was one hot sticky mess. <laughs> How did you guys end up getting back to <coughs> and even considering getting married? I was about 30 minutes from Miami, and I worked with some guys in the barbershop, and now that she wasn't there, um, I kind of started hanging out with them, and I kind of got a little off the chain a little bit. You know? Got off the chain? Got off the chain. Yeah. And by her continuously kind of, you know, reaching out, saying, hey, are you all right? You know, and I wanted her to reach out. I reached out a little bit, and... It basically got to a point where after about two or three months of being off the chain, I kind of realized, hey, you know what? It is what it is. You know, the child is going to be here. I need to man up and do the right thing. She had opened up the, the invitation for me to come to Ohio. Mm -hmm. So we decided three months before my daughter was born that I was going to come on out to Ohio. I'm going out there to be her. You tell me what you think your current problems are now that you're back together. What are your concerns? My main concerns are his, his temper and attitude and the fact that I never get temper and attitude. Yes. It doesn't matter the situation. It's it's always the end of the world situation. It's, it's always the end of the world. It's never just it's a, never a pop gun it's, problem. It's, it's always an atomic it's, problem. It's always the end of the world. It's always it's going to be the end of the world. Any situation. It's How often does he get angry during the course of any given week? Just kind of like a ballpark. It's more about any given day. Now, 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 Mr. Bay, she's calling you out here, and I, and I want you to, <sighs> could that in fact be the case? When I first came to Ohio, it wasn't like that. We had a great time. But things happened. So a lot of things have happened. A lot of arguments, a lot of name calling, a lot of disrespect, a lot of trust issues. Gets, I'm at that point now. Okay. So yeah, every day I'm just an old man man right now. I'm going to drill down now mm -hmm. into what all those issues were that drove you off the edge. Next, Nick texting an ex-boyfriend started argument while shopping for a promise ring. Are you considering marriage but aren't sure that your intended is really right for you? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt.
where the city screams for justice. Give me a name. By the time we get that community dead. When the guilty are called to pay. Yeah, I'm back. And like Bryce lets his trophies? Try these. There's one sound that strikes fear into the hearts of all criminals. Law and order SVB. Viewer discretion advised. Tonight at 7 on My45. Charlie's sister is having a baby. Walking around with a giant parasite inside that gives me the creeps. Literally really hear where it comes out. Next end of it. Today at 4.30 on My45. You wouldn't wait to call a doctor if your child was sick, and you wouldn't wait to call the police if your house was being robbed. So why would you wait to call an attorney asking if it hurt in a wreck? In a wreck, need a check, make one call, that's all. Call 977 Now handling IBC filter cases. People look up to me. My clients rely on me for information about themselves. It's the best feeling. This is what I'm meant to do as a person, to help other people. Helping them heal. Being able to do that makes me feel like the richest person in the world. Before massage school,